Hi everyone, how are we doing today? Um, it's Adeleke, I'm back in the building. Guess what we're going to be talking about today? Uh, before I start, just introduce myself for the people that don't know me. I'm Adeleke Adeshina, uh, I'm a third year medical student uh, currently at UMDNJ, School of Osteopathic Medicine uh, in uh, New Jersey. Uh, I invented uh, the Think Positive Incorporated website. My job here is to try to make the lives of so many medical students that go through this every year. They complain. You know, I feel like you need a little better uh, understanding, a lot of concepts. So, you know, so let's get it rolling. You know, today we're going to talk about liver function test, okay? Kind of break it down. You know, you go to the hospital, you man, like, oh, the attendant asking you, hey, buddy. So what does that liver function test tell you? You're like, ASTLT? What am I supposed to do with it? Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So let's talk about LFTs, right? Liver function test. Um, so just before we start, a little, you know, overview of, you know, things you kind of know about. I, I kind of like to go back to the basics, okay? So the liver, you know, everyone knows the liver. It's the largest organ in your body. It's big. It's right in right upper quadrant. Right? So, it's pretty huge. It's a humongous little thing. I kind of like to draw. So, let's see if I can get that. And there you go. Something like that. Not that sharp, but that's the trick. Right? So, just going to review a little bit about liver anatomy. You know, got a couple of lobes in the liver, right and left lobe, little quadrant, quadrant lobe, that stuff like that. That's not what we're really going to focus on. But I think, uh, before I go into liver function test, it's extremely important that you know anatomy. You know, like, it's like learning how to drive a car. You know, like, if you don't know where the steering is and you don't know where the gear is, just forget it. Don't bother driving the car. You're not going to ever... You know, but if you, okay, I know where the steering is, gear is, okay, I know where the pedals are, okay, now you know the parts, you know, then you learn how to drive the car, it's called anatomy and physiology, learning the function. So, you know, kind of just go a little overview about liver, uh, what the liver looks like. Liver is made out of parasites, right? We all know that, you know, there's little, the little hexagonal structure they probably taught you in medical school, something like that. And right in the middle, guess what? You got the central vein. But before we start right there, you know, like, I, I kind of want to bring your uh, memories back a little bit. Let me erase this. And let's talk a little bit about how things get to the liver. Everybody eats food. We eat, we take drugs. We ingest alcohol. You take all these vitamin pills, you know, whatnot. And they all have to go into your gut. They go into your gut. And when you get to your gut, they all have to go through what? Little enterocytes. They absorb it, the absorption gets into the capillary system, the capillary has to shun through the venous system, and this venous system ends up this tiny big little vein, so they're called the superior mesenteric artery, which comes up like that, right? And the inferior mesenteric artery, who actually has a friend of his, who is the um, splenic vein. I'm sorry, I meant to say vein, that's my fault. So this superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, and the splenic vein, they all come together to form something called as beautiful as the portal vein. So basically what's that saying? Everything I eat, everything I put in my mouth, it's basically going to go through my belly, bam, it's always going to go through the liver. The liver is like the gateway into medical school, right? Gateway into If you want to get a job, you got to go through the boss. You got to go to an interview. So it's like, like everything that gets into the body has to go through the liver. Your liver must be really important. But why? Hold on. So you're telling me every junk, toxins, food, particles, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, all have to go through the liver? Yeah, it has to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> why? Well, I know that. Hold up. That's just one. So here's my, I'm going to tell you a mnemonic and you're going to be like, no, I'm like, yeah. So the portal vein, right? So I'll put that PV, okay? Then you have an hepatic artery, right? I know basic physiology, we learned it, we forgot it, yeah. Remember, it has to be artery to arterials, arterials to vein, to arterials to capillaries, capillaries to vein, is venous to vein. It's the same thing in the entire body, trust me. So I'm not going to go through the whole, like, you know, you have to learn an anatomy because that's already a pain. So let's just put the hepatic artery right next to it. So that's two things going in, right? And one thing coming out called the your bowel ducts, right? You have intrahepatic bowel ducts that come in 
to kind of form your common bile duct, a little bit of the cystic duct, and then you got your gallbladder, and eventually you have the common bile duct right here. This is the, and eventually which drains into your duodenum. So this is extremely important. That's the reason why I'm going through this anatomy because a lot of scissors are real. Why is he talking about it? I don't care. No, you should care. You know why? Because everything I talk about from now and for it, you'll be able to make sense out of it. Because if you don't know how things are going in, and eventually, like I said, the portal vein, the hepatic artery, they're all going to dump into the central vein, right? They form little capillaries, right? So let's assume I'm just going to draw this right here to the left. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see. And little capillaries. And the capillaries are kind of fenestrated a little bit. And they're called sinusoids. Right? And eventually the sinusoids are going to drain. And they are basically draining to the central vein. But from the central vein, uh oh. Has to drain out of the liver because it has to be. If there's a door in front of the house, it better be a door at the back of the house called the hepatic vein. And the hepatic vein will now drain into your inferior vena cava. All the way back into your right heart, right atrium, bam, you got a cardiac output. That's kind of the basics, but now it's going to kind of make it messy. It looks like a little messy, but let me erase a couple of that. But that's basically the, all you have to know, because the reason is when I start talking about, oh, your AST is up, your ALT is up, oh, your ARCFOS is up, and blah, 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 you're like, where's that all coming from? So I kind of want you to kind of get the big picture here. This is the big picture. If you know this, no attending can, you know, kind of like make you look stupid. I mean, you're like, oh. So the reason why this is important is because the way we look at disease processes and how it cause these damages to the liver, which is made of hepatocytes, is because it could be pre-hepatic, intrahepatic, or post-hepatic. That means before, in, or out. Right? So, let's check it out. Let's talk about liver function test. I'm going to erase this for a minute. And let the party begin. So, you have the liver cells are made up of hepatocytes. Hepatocytes, hepato means liver, cytes means cells, and these cells, they do a lot of work. A lot of, uh, you know, biochemical reactions occurs in the liver, a lot of uh, processing. So the most important thing you have to know is there's two liver function uh, enzymes that we mark, that we, they are markers of uh, liver damage. And I don't know why this marker is not working. It's called aspartate transaminase. And alanine transaminase. This is the two markers that shows a living injury. Basically, it's like somebody you chewing something in your mouth, and somebody like gives you a punch in the cheek, you spit it out. Exactly. That when the liver is damaged, it spits out these enzymes, and that's what we measure when we do it in a, a liver function uh, in the hospital. So, in short, we call that AST, and this is ALT. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, what can make these guys go up. So, um, the most common cause in the United States, the most common cause of liver damage is what? Guess what it is. Oh, man. Probably did this last night. It's alcohol, buddy. Right? It's alcohol. Right? Alcohol is the most common cause of liver damage. Right? But you have to drink drink a lot of alcohol for a very extensive amount of time to actually cause a lot of damage. And there will be another chapter that I'll actually dedicate on how alcohol actually causes liver damage. But uh, what I want you to know is alcohol, basically in short, is converted to aldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase. And aldehyde can now be converted into acetate by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. I'm not even going to bother writing the enzyme because I'm going to, I want to talk about uh, that. Um, but what I want you to understand is alcohol produces a toxin. And this toxin actually stimulates a cell called the stellate cells. 
they're kind of like peri um, capillary cells. They're right below the capillaries. They normally store vitamin A. However, these cells, when they get uh, stimulated by alcohol, which is due to its toxins, cause them to lay down collagen. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Remember I told you like you got that little periporter system with a little hexagon? You got a hepatocyte that's getting exchanged between blood vessels and all of a sudden somebody's pulling like fibrosis, a little bit of collagen in between. That's what we call cirrhosis. And once you lay down collagen, you get the fibrosis and that's what actually causes the liver damage. But this is an extensive amount of time. So obviously, one of the most common things you're going to notice in a patient with alcoholic liver is it looks fatty initially and eventually it becomes cirrhotic, it becomes hard as a rock. That's a bad idea. I don't think you want to live it to look like that. So, one thing you look at it, you get a CBC, I mean you get your uh, liver function test and you know that the AST is actually greater than ALT. That's actually the only exception when you actually see AST greater than ALT. And I'm going to talk about ALT in a minute, but what I want you to know is that's a 2 to 1 ratio that you would notice. So something like 400 to about 200. So when you actually do your liver function test, you see that it's elevated. So watch out for that. It's always a 2 to 1 ratio. And the mnemonic, if you ever use first aid for USMLE, it's toasted. So when you drink alcohol, it's kind of like you are toasted, which means AST is greater than ELT. That being said, let's talk a little bit about ALT. ALT is very specific to the liver. It's the most specific liver enzyme. And you know how I remember it? L is for liver. So A L T. Because it just makes my life easier. That kind of makes like people's life easy. That's what I do every day. But it's, you know, it's tough. I know, I know. So ALT is specific to the liver. So anytime you get asked, you know ALT is this specifically targeting the liver. So now, how do we measure ALTs and ASTs? Let's say you get a, a mildly elevated uh, Alpha, uh, ALT and EST, that might tell you the person is probably having some kind of um, chronic viral illness, you know, kind of, you know, hepatitis going on, uh, causing the liver enzymes to kind of get damaged and spit out stuff. So you probably see um, the ratios a little bit elevated, just mild in the, in the hundreds. Uh, and so you, it's just special spectrum, like some kind of like viral infection, and usually chronic. If it's, um, I'll say, you get about between like uh, in the hundreds to a thousands, I'll suspect an acute, so I'll say between a hundred to one thousand. This is like, you know, between like in the hundreds, you know, I'm suspecting an acute viral illness, viral infection. And what would that kind of be? Uh, some kind of hepatitis, you know, kind of going into the, into the uh, liver. Now greater than ten thousand, that is some serious, serious acute viral illness, some necrosis going on in the liver, it's just spitting out all this uh, uh, liver enzymes. So we kind of get a ballpark what's going on, but you know what, that's not good enough. What are the things that can actually cause hepatitis? Hepatitis is actually just a general term, you know that, right? I hope you're aware. It is just means inflammation, some kind of inflammation going on in the liver. So the way it's actually broken down, just going to put this on the side a little bit. And just know we're still talking about EST and ELT. Is uh, you know, I found this beautiful mnemonic and step up to medicine. And I thought everybody should just know this because if you just know this, your life just becomes so great, man. Check this out. If you can count A B C D E F G H I, you basically walk around feeling like you're the dun. So the first thing that can cause, you know, other things actually can cause elevated EST and ELT. And this is remember that we're only talking intrahepatic. Right? So check this out. Autoimmune hepatitis. Right? A. B for hepatitis 